Two weeks ago in Stockholm, a Russian national and a Bombardier executive appears in court, handcuffed. He's detained on suspicion of bribery. The Swedish National Anti-Corruption Unit's prosecutor believes he's been part of a bid-rigging scheme that helped Bombardier Transportation get a public contract in Azerbaijan. In 2013, a Bombardier-led consortium was awarded a 340 million US dollar contract financed by the World Bank. The money was to be used for upgrading Azerbaijan's national railway. Swedish authorities think bribes were paid and that other Bombardier executives in Sweden could also be involved. Our own investigation shows that the case has many ramifications. Consortium, the Bombardier Consortium in, in Baku. It's early February. We're meeting with colleagues from Swedish public television, SVT, and the TT News Agency, going through documents they've obtained. Two contracts show Bombardier used a mysterious intermediary to send equipment to Azerbaijan. For this project, Bombardier's Swedish subsidiary has to provide systems used for rail control and signaling to another of its subsidiaries in Russia. But the two contracts show that Bombardier in Sweden doesn't sell its equipment directly to Bombardier in Russia. Rather, the transaction goes through a third player, a company called Multiserve Overseas. It's registered in the UK, but we don't know much about its owners. The first contract shows that Bombardier Sweden sells the signaling equipment for 46 train stations to Multiserve for about 19 million US dollars. Then Multiserve sells the same equipment to Bombardier Russia for over 104 million. That's an 85 million difference. Uh, Boyut Kesik Station. Boyut Kesik Station. Je vais vous donner la dernière à moi que j'ai. Keshli, Keshli Station? Station. C'est la même chose. Donc, on a vraiment les 46 mêmes stations. Là. Oui. Back in Montreal, we reviewed every detail of each of the two contracts, station by station, with the certified product examiner. When we take a look at both contracts, we see that there are no changes between them. I don't understand from an economic standpoint how we can end up with two identical contracts. Multiserve doesn't seem to have done much work. Yet, Multiserve gets the biggest chunk of the money. The 85 million is hard for me to understand. Bombardier sits at both ends of this deal. And with this transaction, they would be leaving 85 million on the table. What has Multiserve done to earn 85 million dollars in these deals? Bombardier has indicated to our colleagues that Multiserve was, among other things, taking care of logistics related to shipping. Um, we're looking for a company called um, Multiserve Overseas. At their London address, no sign of a Multiserve office or any employees. Yeah, it's a registered company for Charles Russell, so there isn't actually anyone from that company here. Searching through the Panama Papers, we discovered that while Multiserve was buying equipment from Bombardier Sweden, the intermediary also signed an intriguing contract with another company, Rambo Management, from the British Virgin Islands, for exactly the same equipment. We can see 13 stations from the 46 listed in the contracts signed with Bombardier. If Rambo provides the same units, it doesn't make sense. It's impossible. So that means that one of the two documents is a fake. One of them is a fake. So that means they can't coexist in the same accounting. Impossible. Impossible. When one looks at the payment timetable of all these transactions, the possible purpose of this contract with Rambo emerges. In April 2014, Multiserve is supposed to get an advance payment of $23 million from Bombardier's subsidiary in Russia. Within two weeks, Multiserve also promises to pay the same amount to Rambo management. 
Ça veut donc dire que le profit reste pas dans Multiserve. That means that profits don't stay in Multiserve. They're funneled down into Rambo. Rambo's in the BVI, where the tax rate is almost zero for offshore companies. It becomes interesting to send profits in this company. Euh, ça devient intéressant d'envoyer un profit euh, dans cette compagnie-là. It doesn't end there. We found out that almost simultaneously, another shell company, Crownway Trade, with owners in Belize, is to receive in turn 15.8 million from Rambo. In Stockholm, the prosecutor for the anti-corruption unit believes Multiserve was used to pay bribes for the project in Azerbaijan. In emails from Bombardier filed in court, Bombardier employees are describing Multiserve as a shell with no true trading, a vehicle to siphon monies from the public sector into private pockets. But ultimately, who pocketed the money Rambo management received from Multiserve? In London, our Russian colleague Olesya Shmagun helps us understand who hides behind Rambo. So in documents we are working with, we see uh, many signs of uh, Alexei Krapivin. Alexei Krapivin is the owner of Rambo. We also find traces of him in a Bombardier company in the Netherlands. This Dutch corporation is a shareholder of a Russian firm in the railway business. Today, Olesya will meet German Gurbentsov. He was a banker in Russia before he went into exile in London for fear of reprisals by ex-business partners. In 2012, he survived a murder attempt in Britain. He's relevant because he know really well all these people we are investigating right now. He agreed to meet with Alessia off camera. Here's what he thinks of the multi-serve and Rambo transaction. The whole scheme is the stupidest way to give an excuse to transfer money. Some time ago, everyone did like this because no one got punished for it. It's old-fashioned. It's something cavemen do. Documenting what's behind Multiserve will be a team effort. Our group of journalists found out that Multiserve's parent company has been involved in millions of dollars worth of transactions with Alexei Krapivin. So we have this complicated loan system like money comes back and forth from one company to another. It's an old trick borrowed from money laundering schemes. For tax authorities, the more layers you add, the more complicated it becomes to pierce these layers. In this document seized at Bombardier by Swedish investigators, Alexei Krapivin is described as being part of a small group of people who have access to almost all heads of railways of former USSR countries, and that with such connections, they can influence decision-making. Influencing decisions. That's just what the Swedish anti-corruption unit thinks Bombardier was able to do in Azerbaijan. They have had several unofficial meetings with representatives before the procurement ever started. So, of course, they, they have been colluding with the criteria for the solutions for the uh, Azerbaijan Railway Authority in, in order to make it easier for uh, Bombardier to win the contract. Bombardier is not an organisme but non lucratif. Bombardier is not a non-profit organization. If we consider there's no economic reason to leave 85 million to multi-serve, then it could be a scheme to give back money to some of the people who have given you contracts. Ça pourrait être également là un stratagème pour remettre l'argent à des gens qui nous ont déjà donné des contrats là. So it could also be corruption. In a press release, Bombardier states that it was awarded the Azerbaijan contract after a fair and open competition. According to the prosecutor on the case, Bombardier's executives in Sweden agreed to yet another favor to win the bidding process. On top of the scheme with Multiserve, he says, they also seem to have agreed to include Transsignal Rebita, an Azerbaijan company with no experience, as a partner in the project. So the person behind the Azerbaijan company, your understanding is that uh, it's somebody who is from Azerbaijan authorities? Yes, 
that's the upside for him because in the end that means that they will have received um, income. Apparently they have been arresting some journalists in the region. Um, so we are trying to find somebody else to go to the place. So With the help of her Bosnian colleague Miranda Petrucic and her contacts in Azerbaijan, we were able to look a little deeper into this company in Baku. The head office is located in this apartment building. At the door of what is supposed to be the address of Transsignal Rabita, there is no sign of the company. One of Miranda's colleagues also drove near the border with Iran to the village of Fuzili, where the owner of the company supposedly resides. This is where the owner of Transsignal Rabita lives, according to our research. He's an electrician. He says he knows nothing about what the company does. No one here or in Baku could tell us more about Transsignal Rabita. This leaves us with many questions we wanted to ask Bombardier. Our colleague Joachim Tiffemark tried to get some answers from one of Bombardier's executives in Sweden, Thomas Bimer. Uh, det är två avtal med uh, multiserv mm -hmm. som du har skrivit under. Yeah. Är det din signatur där eller? Det stämmer. Ja. Uh -huh. He recognized his signature on one of the documents but didn't want to comment further. Du, och sen så säljer ni tillbaka. Questions about what happened in Azerbaijan are also being asked by the World Bank which initiated an audit. In 2013, the bank provided $220 million in additional financing for the Azerbaijan project, most of it to pay for the signaling portion. The $85 million that went to Multiserve represents more than a third of that total amount. Bombardier says it's taking the matter very seriously and assisting authorities. The company adds that it has no information thus far of any unlawful behavior and that they will take appropriate actions if they discover any. Back in Stockholm, the lawyer for the Bombardier executive arrested in Sweden says her client denies allegations made against him by authorities. As for Prosecutor Forsberg, he's focusing his investigation for the time being on the Azerbaijan contract, but he is not closing any door as the investigation moves forward. It's not unusual in this kind of uh, investigation that we find other suspicions uh, or allegations that might lead us to open another investigation. Last December, the Globe and Mail newspaper revealed that Bombardier also used the Multiserve shell company in Russia. The purpose of Multiserve. Our Swedish colleagues also obtained this contract relating to Mongolia. Dated February 2016, it shows Multiserve was still in Bombardier's plan until recently. In this case, as in many others, the story leads back here in Sweden. It's also here that the Swedish police investigation started. And for now, nobody knows where it will end. <laughs>